Today I'm going to talk about cellulitis, a common but potentially serious and sometimes life-threatening bacterial infection that affects the skin and the tissues under the skin. In this video we're going to cover the following topics, all of which are time-stamped and split into chapters to help you navigate your way around the video. So let's start off with symptoms and signs of cellulitis. Now these can include pain, tenderness, warmth and swelling of the skin and it can affect any part of the body including the legs, the hands, the feet and even around your eyes. It's also common for the skin to turn red or purple, which may look like a rash, as you can see in these photos, but it's important to note that this may be less noticeable on brown or black skin. As the infection spreads, the discoloration of the skin tends to darken and the skin tends to swell more. Now, sometimes pus-filled blisters can appear and the surface of the skin may look lumpy or pitted like the skin of an orange. It can also cause flu-like symptoms, including a fever, chills, body aches and fatigue, and that's because of the infection that's taking hold. So what causes cellulitis? Well, cellulitis is caused by different bacterial infections. However, streptococcus, which you might know as strep, or staphylococcus, also known as staph, are the most common causes of cellulitis. In general, it's not contagious, meaning that it doesn't spread from one person to another. Now, in terms of who can be affected, well, anyone can contract cellulitis. However, certain groups of people are at higher risk of getting cellulitis. Now, these include children, people with weakened immune systems, so for example, people who've got HIV or people who are on immunosuppressant drugs, so for conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis, people who've got poor circulation, for example, those who are overweight or obese, People with a wound or issue affecting the skin that might be prone to infection, so people who've got cuts, bug or animal bites, surgical incisions, tattoos or piercings. People who've got chronic skin conditions, so things like eczema, repeated athlete's foot or psoriasis, and people who inject drugs or people with diabetes. Now, what should you do if you think you have cellulitis? Well, if you think you might have cellulitis and you also have a high temperature, fast heartbeat, you're confused, maybe you've lost consciousness, or if purple or very dark patches appear on your skin, you should seek immediate medical attention because these symptoms might indicate a serious complication that might be life-threatening. Otherwise, you should call your doctor and ask to be seen. For most cases of cellulitis, your health provider will discuss your symptoms and do a physical examination. In most cases, they won't need to conduct any tests. However, in serious cases of cellulitis, they might do a swab of the skin or any wounds to determine which bacterial strain is causing the cellulitis in order to prescribe the most appropriate antibiotic to fight the infection. They might also do a blood test to determine whether or not the infection has spread to the blood. Now, in most cases, your health provider will prescribe oral antibiotics to treat the cellulitis, and after this, your symptoms should start to improve within a few days of starting antibiotics, and you should fully recover in about 7 to 10 days. Other things that you can do to manage your symptoms at home are taking over-the-counter medications, so things like paracetamol or ibuprofen if these are suitable for you, elevating the affected area which helps to improve blood flow, so for example if it's affecting your feet, keeping them raised on a stool if you're sitting down in a chair, regularly moving the joint near the affected area as well as staying hydrated, so drinking plenty of water. You can help prevent getting cellulitis by keeping skin clean and well moisturised, cleaning any cuts or wounds after you get them with clean water and using antiseptic cream and trying to prevent cuts and scrapes in the first place, especially if you're a diabetic and you can't feel injuries to your feet. So to do this, you can wear appropriate footwear, even indoors. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. For weekly medical education videos, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below. For more information on cellulitis, please check out the description box of this video for trusted resources. Thanks for watching and bye.